what's the difference between low self-worth and humility? Humility is being able to own the positives and negatives of where you are, I would say. Later on, I had the courage to ask for feedback, and I just said, what made you go from so excited to, to not want to hire me? And she said, it was your attitude. It was your attitude. I came in with an attitude of entitlement, and I did not come in with an attitude of humility and gratitude. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another episode of Next Level University, where we help you level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed yesterday's episode, episode number 1610, Do You Ever Overcome the Fear of Judgment? We told a little story from my experience with TikTok. Today, for episode number 1611, the difference between high self-worth and entitlement. Disclaimer, before we start this, I don't know where this episode's going to go. It's probably going to be all over the place because this is a very challenging topic to discuss, but our goal is to have a constructive conversation about this, and Alan and I both kind of have a negative relationship with entitlement. So if it comes across as negative when we talk about it, we just have a very negative relationship with it, and I think we've both been hurt by it in the past, and oftentimes the things that hurt you in the past are things you want to avoid as much as humanly possible moving into the future. Do you remember why we decided to do this episode? We were going to do it when we talked about, I think we talked about being villainized, and we said, all right, let's push the episode. I don't want it to be back-to-back -back with something else like that. You remember why we did this? Yeah, I was contemplating... <laughs> this is going to be a good one, I can tell. I was contemplating... Let's say the whole word. I was contemplating the difference between. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Buckle up. Buckle up. Buckle up, Kev. Lock I'm it up. Lock, up. It up. Lock it up. Lock it up. I was thinking about humility. I was thinking about gratitude. I was thinking about what the opposite of humility is. I was trying to figure out. There was actually a situation in one of the departments that we run where someone was trying to attend book club that. Uh, one of the team members didn't want them there because it wasn't as psychologically safe of a space. Mm. And again, that's as, that's as deep as I can go into that. But this person who wanted to attend book club, uh, when this person set a boundary, was not happy. And I think that, so there's this quote that you and I learned. We were in Phoenix? No, we were in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what part? Ooh... I do in my mind, but I can't remember. We were probably, I think we were only like a half hour outside of Denver. Okay. We were in Colorado, Lauren Johnson, shout out. She had a quote, the people who get upset, the people who get the most upset when you set a boundary are the people benefiting from you not having any. Mm. In other words, when you set a boundary and someone overreacts, usually it's because there was some level of entitlement. And I think we need to define entitlement. Entitlement is, we told the story about how when Kevin didn't want to stay for pizza, I guilt tripped him mm. yeah, yeah. after we helped some friends move. That was me being entitled to his time. Like, Kev, you know, how dare you want to leave? That, that's entitlement, really. Well, you didn't do is. it it's, that way. That's not the way you did it. Yeah, no, I know. I tried to be. I would but say you're on the lower. Was a little... Yeah, yeah, but I would say on oh. the lower end. Okay, well, yeah. I do appreciate that. Of course. One, one thing, and, and again, a lot of us have felt this way on the holidays. Well, that's not how we do it. You know, you have to be here on time at this time at this place. And a lot of people love the holidays, so I'm not, I'm not crapping on the holidays by any means. But I think the holidays create a lot of entitlement. They, they don't mean to. It's just, you know, you're entitled to get everyone gifts. Uh, you're entitled to be at this place at a certain time, ready to eat this type of food, regardless of whether or not you like it, that kind of thing. And so so it's difficult during the holidays to, to maintain boundaries because there's a lot of infringement of rights. And and I believe entitlement is thinking that you you are deserving of someone else's time. You are deserving of someone else's effort. You are deserving of an opportunity 
So someone who's entitled would be considered someone who maybe was a spoiled kid who, well, I want, I want, you know, 50, pre- I have a good example that I think will resonate with everybody. Not you, Kev. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Harry Potter, the very first book. Dudley is a character who is extraordinarily entitled. He counts the number of per- uh, birthday presents that he mm-hmm. gets. So Harry lives under the stairwell in a closet, essentially. And Dudley is the epitome of the spoiled brat entitled child. And it's his birthday and he's stomping on the stairs, even though Harry is trying to sleep and there's like dust falling on Harry's face. And Harry is, you know, woken up and has to make breakfast for Dudley for his perfect day, for his special day. And Dudley says, how many are there? In terms of the presents, there's like, and, and the parents say, 27, counted them myself. He's like, last year, last year, there was 30, or Mm. whatever. In other words, what a spoiled a-hole, right? And that's just facts. Now, that's an extreme example of a spoiled brat entitled just, I deserve, deserve, deserve. And obviously, in this case, it's the parents' fault more than, you know, for anyone who's seen Harry Potter, it's very clearly the parents who, who created this monster, for lack of better phrasing. But my point in this episode is entitlement, I think, is dangerous. I think when you you feel like you deserve things by default without effort, uh, it's it's definitely a, a, a road to failure, long-term failure. And the difference between entitlement and self-worth, I think self-worth is actually setting a boundary. I think self-worth is, I actually think that I, I am more valuable than this. So I'll give a tiny example. So when I was... Young, I worked for minimum wage. I remember it was $7.25 an hour. And I was a cart kid and a bus boy. And I was definitely the peon. And I was definitely uh, mistreated. Definitely. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Now, again, it is what it is. That happens. I'm sure I'm not the only one. But would I go back and be a cart kid again? The answer is no. And, And it's not because I'm entitled. It's because I've earned an education. I've earned the ability to add more value. I've earned the, I've earned my stripes, so to speak. And we're going to talk about that in a later episode this week. But that's really the difference. Entitlement is thinking you deserve by default for no reason, just like Dudley. You know, I I deserve 30 presents for my birthday because last year there was 30. Instead of just being grateful and humble for the 27 presents that he has. Uh, And self-worth, I think, is on the other end, which is, you know, I think I've, I've surpassed this, at this stage in my life, and, and I know that I'm better than this, not from an ego place, but from a, I've built my own castle strong enough and long enough to where I feel like I can say no and set a boundary here. It's a very challenging thing to talk about and explain because I don't know, I don't know if the goal is even to get high self-worth. I think it's to get accurate self-worth. Mm-hmm. I think high self-worth oftentimes can be delusionally high self-worth of I am deserving of something. So, okay, let's do this because this is really what we want to talk about. The difference between high self-worth and entitlement is you earn high self-worth through working your way from maybe low self-worth to middle self-worth to, again, when I say high self-worth, I just mean appropriate. I mean it's appropriate for you as a human being. I'm not saying intrinsically. Intrinsically, you're valuable. Alan and I are valuable. Everybody's valuable. Intrinsically, you're valuable. But with self-worth, what we've boiled it down to, and we looked at a lot of definitions, and we're always trying to learn more about it, it's really your level of self-importance to the world, to something. Now, again, very fine line. I don't. I'm not saying I should have higher self-worth because I'm more important to the world. That's not what I'm saying. But if we were to say... I don't know. I don't even know if I have a really good example of it. Entitlement is you feeling deserving of something regardless of effort. So maybe you go to a restaurant and on your invitation it says you're entitled to one drink, one appetizer, one entree, and one dessert. That's just what you get for coming. That's what we give everybody. Everybody is entitled to that. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to do the dishes. You don't have to dress a certain way. Everybody gets that. That's being entitled to something when somebody passes away in your family and they leave you stuff you're entitled to that you didn't necessarily have to work for it it was given to you 
but that's written in the will. High self-worth is something that takes a long, long, long period of time, and it's something that you really, really earn. And I think you can sense the energy when you're around somebody who has very high self-worth because I think they hold themselves differently. Maybe they don't put up with BS. Maybe they have super high standards. Maybe they are very, very good with their boundaries. And maybe at times it comes off as entitled if you're somebody who who struggles with lower self-worth. But this was my initial thought, Alan. This is where I kind of wanted to go because I think it might make sense. What's the difference between low self-worth and humility? Humility is being able to own the positives and negatives of where you are, I would say. So if somebody says, hey, you're in real, really good shape and you're a professional athlete who is always in really good shape... You being humble might be, thank you so much, I appreciate the compliment, I've worked really, really hard. If you have low self-worth, you might completely dismiss that and say, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm not proud of my body, I don't look good. Those are two very, very different lives. But here's the, here's the other challenging thing, and we've seen this a lot, if you have low self-worth, you unfortunately probably attract and don't filter out a partner that doesn't belong in your life. Yeah. But that wouldn't necessarily be humble. It's not humble to date someone who treats you like garbage. Well, that person's probably entitled. Th- th- very, very possibly so. So I'm trying to... I think it's almost easier to talk about humility and low self-worth than it is to talk about entitlement and high self-worth, maybe because I have more experience with the low self-worth. I don't really understand, to the same degree, the high self-worth. But the the dangerous part is when it gets delusional. And we've said this many times where I think everybody is delusional with their self-worth and their self-belief. All I mean by that is you're not fully accurate, myself included, Alan included. I'm not saying I have it all figured out by any stretch of the imagination. I understand what it's like to fall under and be maybe delusionally low on self-worth. I don't really... I've had bouts, moments of being high on it, but I don't know that I really understand completely what it's like the time when you uh <laughs> yes but i think that's a good one I, I told that story like two days ago i know we gotta give us the quick version uh we went to a brendan burchard event i was scared that i wasn't gonna fit in i ended up fitting in a lot made friends felt really good about myself i felt really valuable and then when i came home i was the freaking man <laughs> i don't that? know if you know this but i went to a brendan burchard event i spoke to damn near ago. 12 people yeah i'm a big deal i you know and put some respect on my name put some respect on it the uh, the funny thing if you've ever seen i don't know movies or films same thing movies and films <laughs> uh, if you've ever seen one of those people who inherited wealth or inherited the throne quote unquote and they're they have people fanning them yeah 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 it's that it's that whatever that is i mean that just has to go and there's a big difference between alan what is high self-worth what is high self-worth look like to you i i honestly believe it comes down to how much you actually like yourself we're reading a book in book club called the courage to be disliked and we talk it, it talks a lot about it doesn't say the words self-worth, but it does talk about self-worth. And in book club, we do polls. And I'm so curious of the data because I want to see where everyone's at. And one of the questions that I asked is, I think all of us have a certain amount of things about ourselves that we like and a certain amount, a certain amount of things about ourselves that we don't like. So I've talked about how I didn't like my nose and all these different things. Kevin doesn't like how he's short. So we all have, it's not a, it's not a, 10 out of 10, I like myself, or a zero that I don't like myself. It's it's a percentage. And so I had everyone in book club put the percentage in the chat. And this was actually really scary to share, and I'll share it with everyone. I said, behind the scenes, I actually think that I like myself a lot. I, I There's not a lot about me that I don't really like. There's certain things, don't get me wrong, for sure. But most of my pain is social. And so I think self-worth comes down to how you feel about yourself when you're by yourself. Mm. What I've come to understand, though, 
is my self-worth issues are, are social. I'm very cowardly. I have trouble speaking up for myself a lot. And I'm still trying to figure out where, where that fits. And I think many of our listeners have that challenge too. You know, do you have trouble standing up for yourself? Do you, do you feel disrespected constantly and not say anything about it or not, not call it out? That's a me issue big time. I think that's my kryptonite personally. But when it comes to me by myself alone in, in this office, when no one's watching, I'm not upset about me. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of me. I think, I think I'm great. I work really hard to be great. That's, I think that's real self-worth. And then I think the way it translates into the world is different. So again, to answer your question, I would turn a question to the listeners, which is what percentage of you likes, what percentage of you do you like genuinely? And just be honest. I don't want you to say 100% like, 0% dislike. I think that's probably a lie. No one likes 100% of themselves. But I think you can get closer and closer and closer to 100%. I know that you like yourself a lot more than you used to. Well, I What's think, ironic is you used to pretend otherwise, and so did I, 100%, by the way. Yeah. yeah. I think, to your point, it, a lot of it has to do with how much, how much you work on yourself. 100%. I think yeah, that's it. You're a, not going to like a house that you don't renovate. Y- well, okay, so this is a really good example. Next Level Nation, what is happening? If you've thought to yourself, I want to try coaching, but you don't really know where to start, group coaching would be a wonderful place for you. That's really why we created it in the first place. We start a new round every 90 days. So if you're hearing this, go to the website, nextleveluniverse.com, and we have the landing page where you can actually hold your spot right now. Even if there's a group going on right now, you can still lock your spot for the next one. The biggest thing that we've seen is as we get closer and closer to the date, unfortunately, some people end up missing. The group fills up and they can't do it, and then they end up regretting that. So please head over to the website. The link will be in the show notes, and we would love to see you there. Imagine two coaches. This is entitlement versus high self-worth. Oh, let me tell a story first. Back, this was, I don't know, we were 300 episodes into the podcast maybe. And I was, at that point, I was doing mindset coaching. I would consider it more than anything. I coached on, I was a personal trainer in the past. I coached on fitness. I talked about relationships. I talked about a lot of stuff, but I, I would consider it mindset coaching. And somebody reached out to me one day and they DM'd me. And it's wild how sometimes when, your deepest fears come true, they actually make a positive point. This person said, hey, I don't mean any disrespect by this, but what gives you the qualifications to be a coach? And I remember thinking to myself, I've never really thought about it. I'm, I, don't, I don't know, I've never really thought about it. And then I, I wrote it out, not from a place of ego, but just from a place of explanation. And I said, I've done 300 podcast episodes at this point. I've studied self-improvement every day for the last however many years. We have really successful mentors. I've read a ton of books. We've interviewed a bunch of people. This is kind of my life. All I really am focused on is growing and evolving and and knowing more about myself. And I said, at the end of the day, I'm helping people who are a few steps behind. Really, I'm I'm not helping anybody who's drastically ahead of me. I'm only teaching what I've learned through through this journey. At the time, I think I charged $50 an hour. For coaching. It would have been entitled for me to say, I charge $500 an hour because I want to. Yeah. Versus saying, I charge, I think this is where, at the time, I think this is what I deserve to make. I I charge $50 an hour because that's what I can get paid and that's the value I can bring to someone. As we grew and we evolved and we learned our pricing went up, not necessarily because we wanted, we were entitled to more money. It's because we were worth more as a coach. And as we grew and evolved, our self-worth continued to increase. If somebody said, I'll give you $50 for a coaching call today, it's, it wouldn't be entitled necessarily for me to say no, but my self-worth of what I am capable of adding value to you and the value I can bring to you as a coach is higher. So my price is also higher. But I know a lot of the stuff that we see on social media is, well, you should charge $5,000 for this, or you should charge $10,000 for this. And if you were to ask why, the person would just say, well, because you should. That's not the answer. The answer should be because you've put in so much work and you've learned so much and you understand your audience and you've practiced this and you know it works and all of this stuff. 
I think that's a really good example of the difference. If you were going to sell a house, you can either look at what it's worth compared to other houses, or you can say, I want this price no matter what, I don't care. That's entitlement. But I do think yeah. the, the biggest thing is the, the amount of work. That's one of the hardest parts about self-worth is I don't know if there is a quick fix. I don't think there is. I, I would say there's not a quick fix. Self-worth and self-belief are two of the weird things where I think the only way to get more of what you want is to do less of what you want. The only way to do more of what you want is to do the things that you're actually afraid of. And that's why they're so damn hard to get. Mm -hmm. But going, but then I'll let Alan talk, getting to the end of it, self-worth is confidence in self. It's valuing yourself accurately. It's understanding based on all the work you've done, the value that you can bring. Last thing, disclaimer. I also understand that some people, they only find their value in what they do in the world. So that's also a dangerous game. And again, I don't have all the answers when it comes to this. This is a very deep topic with a lot of different things that connect to it. But hopefully, maybe a couple of those examples or stories break something free. I don't think this will be, I think this will be one of those episodes where maybe you leave with more questions than you came, but I think there'll be more aligned questions, hopefully. When Kevin used the example of the house, so I've coached a lot of different people in real estate. Emilia was in real estate for many years. We co-bought a house together. And when you buy a house, you look at the comps, which is what other homes in that area sell for. And a lot of times when she would have a client who wanted to overprice the house, she would say, you can do that. That's your choice. But if it doesn't sell, please don't blame me because it's not worth that right yeah. now. And, and that's not saying you don't have a beautiful home. It just means that no one's going to pay that much for this house. And when it doesn't sell for the next six months and you're still stuck living there, please don't blame me. That's her having the self-worth to say, listen, I can't win this unwinnable game that you've put on me. And if you want the house to sell, you have to be willing to accept what people are willing to pay. Versus when Emilia and I were trying to get a house, we went to this one place in Lancaster and there was, you would have thought it was a goddamn theme park. <laughs> there was cars aligned. I mean, I said, sweetheart, let's not even go in. This is not, we're not, no, no, no. We can't do this. This is going to be a bidding war. It was post-COVID, interest rates were really low. Everyone was trying to get out of the city and live in the suburbs. I mean, it was just a unique circumstance. That house was listed for four twenty five. I bet you it sold for five eighty. you know, because of all the people yeah. that wanted it. It's, it's the last cookie in the cookie jar is worth more than the first cookie when there's cookies everywhere. It's just one of those things. And again, you got to be careful with human value versus material value. It's like, well, copper, what's the value of copper? Well, if copper is used in electronics and electronics become more valuable, then copper goes up. It's a commodity. Now, there's a whole economic thing around this, and that's why the whole NFT thing got me all messed up. But <laughs> the point is, is that human worth and human value is very hard to measure. But what you, what you can recognize is entitlement. Entitlement is wanting something for nothing. There was an opportunity. I, I was giving a speech. And I was right in the middle of my speech. And the truth of the matter is, I want to call myself out. I thought I was better than I was, okay? I had inflated self-worth at that time. Uh, temporarily, because it goes quick. <laughs> I'm giving my speech. I think I'm doing a great, great job. I now realize in hindsight I was not doing a great job. Someone comes in and says, hey, please leave your card. I'd love to have you speak to my class. I was like, all right, it's happening, baby. <laughs> Nice. Of course, I'll give you my card. I'll email you right after this and I'll charge you whatever I want because I'm the man. And uh, obviously, I'm being playful, but that was the energy I came with. And I, I said, okay, this, this, and this is the option, blah, blah, blah. And she said, honestly, I'm good. And later on, I had the courage to ask for feedback. And I just said, what made you go from so excited to, to not want to hire me? And she said, it was your attitude. It was your attitude. I came in with an attitude of entitlement and I did not come in with an attitude of humility and gratitude. I'm acting like Tony Robbins, but I'm only a couple years in. You, you can't do that. The world will crush you. 
And I think a lot of people do that. That's my truth. I wrote an article about this. You know, wanting something for nothing is such a dangerous game. Even at NLU, we've got we've got uh, past people that have wanted opportunities, and we could tell. We could tell. It's like you don't want to climb a ladder. You don't want to do the work. You don't want to be responsive and reliable and climb this mountain with us. You want something for nothing. And I can't help you if you want something for nothing, at least not long term. Wanting something for nothing is easy in the moment. It's really good in the moment feels really good in the moment, I should say. But long term, that's how you lose opportunities. I, w- I wish that I had been more humble and grateful. And I wish I had gone to that speech and been more humble and grateful, and then gone and gotten another one, and then gone and gotten another one with hum- humility and gratitude. I wish that I had, I had had a more accurate self-worth. If I had a more accurate self-worth and less entitlement, I probably would have been much better off. I definitely would have. Fortunately, I ate the humble pie. Uh, fortunately, I had the humility to actually ask for feedback instead of just assume, oh, I'm too good for that or I'm too good for her or she didn't know my value. They must have been when scared reality, of my skills. My speaking skills probably scared them off. I would have to yeah. assume. <laughs> you know what? She probably she probably uh, listened to more of the speech. I was like, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. But at the end of the day, I think that we all have to find this balance and be accurate with self. And self-awareness is literally that. It's accurate with self. If you've been speaking for 15 years, mastering your craft, and you know that you're a stronger speaker than most of the market, that's different than being brand new saying, hey, you know, I I think I'm worth 5,000. It's just a different energy. It's a different attitude. And if you don't have an attitude of gratitude, you're in serious trouble. And I just hope that that helps people. Last thing I was thinking of trying to think of another, I just want to make sure it lands. And because I think this is one of those, it's just one of those complicated things. Low self-worth might look like this person doesn't treat me well, but I don't deserve to be treated well. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that is oftentimes a telltale sign of low self-worth. High self-worth, accurate self-worth, however you want to label it, might be I deserve better than this the treatment that this person is giving me because I've done this work. I know my love language is that type of stuff. I've worked on myself so I understand that I actually deserve better than this. Entitlement would be this person and I are very similar. I would I don't even know if that would come across. I don't even know if that would be something that that the person would say. It might be I expect this person to make a million dollars a year and I expect them to be in the best shape ever of all time and I expect them to be the most patient communicator and to meet all of my needs and you not intend on reciprocating any of those things just because you feel like that's what you deserve. That is an entitled mindset and that sets you up for long-term loneliness because you're most likely going to, you're, you're going to say, I don't ever want to settle when reality is settling is not settling. Settling might be actually meeting someone where you are. And that's why it's so hard to talk about self-worth, especially high self-worth. Because when you say that, and again, we've talked to many, 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 many hundreds, if not thousands of members of the community at this point, very few are high, delusionally high when it comes to self-worth entitled. We haven't seen that very often at all. So this episode hopefully will be more about how to recognize this in others. But again, as always, if anything we said triggered you, sit with it and see what it means. I could be off because this is a very challenging thing to to convey, but there's always that question of, is this a me thing or is this a Kev thing? Or is this a me thing or is this an Alan thing? So that would be my next level nugget. Anytime we do episodes like this, it's always... It's always challenging to talk effectively without potentially triggering someone. And if I triggered you, I would say just sit with it and see what it means. I can't promise I'm right, but I know there's probably more in it if we just sit down and think about it. My next level nugget is figure out where you're at with this. Uh, the the last, just to bring Harry Potter for oh, full Oh, of course. Circle yeah, here. come on in, Harry. Got to. The, the best example that I can give is at the end of the books and the movie, I talk more about the films because I've read some of the books but not all of them. When he breaks the Elder Wand and throws it away, that is the moment where Harry realizes that he is enough. That's the moment of finally leaning into his true self-worth. 
Whereas before that, he always felt not good enough or not capable enough. And it makes sense because you can't just start there. You don't just start making, you don't, that's why I don't like the four hour work week. It's, it's nothing against Tim. It's actually a valuable book when you actually read it. I don't like the title. The title is in, entitled. The title is entitled. <laughs> you're not going to make a million dollars a year working four hours a week. You're, you're just not. I mean, I mean, that's just not real. It's not true. It's, it's, it's a lie. Is it possible? Yeah, after 20 years of hard work, then you can probably do that. But that's that's what Kevin and I talk about. We we are not entitled individuals. We try hard not to be, I should say. And trust me, I've had bouts of entitlement, so has he. I told you one of mine. I mean, I, I got smacked down quick on that one. I'm perfect. But, I'm perfect. That's never happened to me. <laughs> so <laughs> You've been smacked down once pretty hard. Right yeah, now. I've mel- multiple, multiple times. But again, that's it's one of those... We talked about this in last one of last week's episodes. It's one of those things where it becomes a weapon you don't know how to use yet. You yeah. think it's accurate. I've earned this. I went to a I went to an event. I spoke on stage. I got a new client, whatever it is. And then you overshoot, and that usually knocks you back down. And then you're you're low but higher than you were. And then the goal is just to keep doing your own unique version of that without cracking too many eggs. And eventually you get to the the accurate appropriate place but it just takes years i just had a really big breakthrough share with everyone setting goals that are the right amount creates an accurate uh amount of humble pie i just had this breakthrough of if he, if if someone sets a goal that's ridiculously high it's gonna hurt their self-worth if someone has no goals it's gonna inflate it yeah that's fair because having a goal benchmarks you up against something yeah and it's almost like if you don't have any goals you're not going to get humble pie if you have big goals you're going to get humble pie constantly and so if your goals are too large too quickly so if like a let's say a seven-year-old tries to become a pro snowboarder that's going to crumble them it's going to crush them but if someone's been snowboarding for 25 years and they're still on the bunny hill they're going to think they're awesome Mm. and and i think that that's you know and that's another episode we'll do at some point which is accurate goals create accurate self-worth I think that would be really valuable. But I just had that breakthrough. I wanted to share it. You got to play in the right league. You got to play in the right league. You per- yeah, play in the right 100%. League. Yeah, you don't play t-ball when you're 27. I never played t-ball, son. <laughs> well, you were the man. I so. went right to uh, farm league when I was an eight-year-old. I played for Sports Minded. That was nice the, work. the name, yeah. You make million dollar sponsorships. And- I got a sponsorship right away from the Twix uh, Trix cereal. <laughs> right away, they came out. I said, "This kid's something special." What do you think of a million dollar sponsorship from Trix cereal? And I said, "I don't eat it, but I'll pretend I do." <laughs> no, what you said is, "I'm too good for that." Yeah, no, I said, "Make it you two million know. or nothing." Tricks are for kids. I'm an adult. I'm an adult now. <laughs> None of that happened. None of that ever happened. If you are looking for a group of like minded individuals who want to work through stuff like this. I know these can be very uncomfortable. Alan and I, I love doing episodes like this, but I always have that little part of me that's that's thinking, I hope nobody takes offense to what I say. I hope they know I mean it in the, the most loving way, and I hope they know that this is for growth more than anything. But one of the big reasons I feel safe doing it is because of you, whether you're watching or listening. In this wonderful community, we have the just the opportunity to serve every single day. That is exactly what the Facebook group is like. It's open, it's warm, it's safe. You can talk about stuff that really matters. So if you're looking for a place to do that, Next Level Nation is a wonderful place. Link will be in the show notes as always. We are officially 39 days out from Next Level Live 2024. We are not entitled to your time, now is but that, we invite you. Is that counting the day this this drops? No. Okay, 38 days. We have thirty. We are officially thirty-eight <laughs> days out. March twenty-third, twenty twenty-four. Next level live. You're gonna get a next level dreamliner. Achieve your dreams ninety days at a time. That's for in person. We also are selling virtual tickets. The in person tickets are ninety-seven dollars per person. Thirty people, three groups of ten. The virtual tickets are forty-seven dollars per person. Thirty people, three groups of ten. The reason the in person is more is because of the meal. The meal is completely paid for it's a buffet style very going to be good stuffed chicken i believe and there's a vegan off- option as well and then you're also going to get a next level dreamliner as well free gift 
And there's also a raffle. We're going to be raffling off some things. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a great day. Here's what I promise you. When you leave that day, you will see yourself differently. You will see the world differently. And you will leave that room with more self-belief and more self-worth, or at least on your way to that. That that day will change you, we promise. If for whatever reason someone hates it, I seriously doubt it, but if for someone for whatever reason someone hates it, I will give you your money back. Okay, so all you have to do is email me, but there's no risk because if you hate it, email me, I'll give you your money back. I really hope that you join us. The link will be in the show notes. Let's party. Tomorrow for episode number 1,612, what's the story you've told yourself? about yourself you've heard a little bit of our stories we've shared many different pieces and i guess times of our lives chapters of our lives so we'll talk a little bit about that tomorrow and what does that mean for you what does your story mean for you and how have you convinced it to propel you forward or to hold you back so that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow as always we love you we appreciate you grateful for each and every one of you. And at NLU, we don't have fans. We have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. Stay humble and grateful. Next Level Nation.